Oopsies, oopsies. Hi, everybody. It's going to be happy Sunday. Wait a couple of minutes for the, the lag to sort itself out. I think it's about, hi, Barbara Clock. Happy Sunday afternoon to you. Nice to see you. It's going to be a bit of a rocky road stream-wise because my beloved Mac is in the shop. I screwed it up by trying to clean it up. So I took it to this computer guy that I've used before. So I'm using a Chromebook that I blew the dust off. Yep, Mac Hospital. And I plugged in the camera and you can run it without software, but I can't like turn anything off like autofocus or things like that. But the picture looks pretty sharp, but I don't know what's going to happen when I start to move around. It might be a little fuzzy, but we'll see how it goes. And um, yeah, it's better than nothing. Uh, I said to the guy, because I brought it in yesterday. And I said, gee, it would be great if I could have it like, yes, I mean, I brought it in Friday and I said, gee, wouldn't it be great if I could have it Saturday? And people are in there and he's a talker. And so I don't know how he gets anything done. And I knew there was no chance of having it ready today. So I didn't even, I didn't even bother calling. I was going to call him late, you know, like, five o'clock yesterday afternoon because he closes at six but I figured that uh, we could make do with the with the Chromebook this Chromebook so old that when I turned it on it said this was your last official update there was no more updates automatic updates for your Chromebook and it said basically go buy a new one um but I don't want to buy a new one. And it shows that there's 13 people in here, but I only see Barbara, so I don't know where everyone else is hiding. But uh, welcome uh, for you folks. Yeah, that's interesting. Just rolled over 13, but Barbara's the only one. But that's okay. Maybe a couple of more people will show... They're saddlebags. Hi, saddlebags. I don't know that I know you, but welcome. I was telling some horrible horseback riding stories last week about being thrown and uh, having the wind knocked out of me. So welcome. Sunday. And Barbara wants to know, do you have a name name that you're willing to share? You don't have to share. I mean, saddlebags is perfectly fine. Oh, your name is Leslie. Well, welcome, Leslie. Welcome, welcome. You're finishing up some shopping. Okay. I haven't done any Christmas shopping at all, but... The only one I have to shop for is my oldest son because he refuses to take money. He wants a gift. And usually by this time, hi, Rosemary, usually by this time of the year, I have paid attention throughout the year and have come up with a really clever idea for a gift, but not so this year. So I don't know. My oldest son will be very happy to take the money and run. And my grandkids, they love to have money so they can buy what they want. And that's about it. So I don't know what Dave wants. So. Anyway, if you read the description, I know I promised I wasn't going to show the 
the winter concertina ever again, but I wanted to make the cover for it and then put it to rest. Um, and I, so I thought I would work on that. And then I've also started to uh, work on my next concertina, I think, um, painting cats. And I made all, well, I'll show you. When I get to when I get done with this, I'll show you what I've got. Hopefully, I'll have time to show you how far I've gotten with the uh, the cat thing. So, but those of you that are regulars know that I usually start off with a reading from uh, Robert Fulgram from the book "All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten," and we're slowly uh, finishing this book up. And uh, after we finish it, I have no idea. Um, what I'm going to read, or if I'm going to read. I started reading just to calm myself down. I was very, very nervous when I started, you know, streaming. And I figured, well, I'll just read and kind of calm myself down. And so it's become kind of um, a habit. And you're going to go get a bite to eat? Okay. Well, I hopefully you'll come back after you get your bite to eat. Um so this is uh, an essay called Testing. It's been real quiet around our house this month. My wife is studying for her exams. Every seven years, she must take and pass an all-day exam in order to be certified by the American Board of Family Practice Physicians as competent in her profession. She's liable for everything she's learned about medicine since the first day she walked into medical school. As for me, I panic just knowing I have to renew my driver's license. I haven't taken an exam since college. Just being in the same house with someone who is studying for one gives my brain the woolly, wary woolies. But it is a provocative, provocative, provocative notion this business of being certified every seven years. I wonder how it would be if all of us had to take a major exam as we pass through the decades of our lives after formal schooling was over. Suppose we had to prove our competency and proficiency as members of the human race. And if we didn't pass muster, we'd have to go back to class for retraining. It makes some sense, actually. See, the only reason we're required to go to school is that we believe a nation is better off educated than ignorant. It works for the common good. But just because we got through the system doesn't mean anything we're really stuck or that we know how to apply what we know, does it? Sometimes I'm appalled by my own ignorance. One of my favorite Peanuts cartoon has Lucy asking Charlie Brown, don't you wish you knew back then what you know now? Charlie stares blank-eyed for a while and then asks, what do I know now? Think about it. What do you know now? I just would, just what should we have nailed down cold in our brains by say age 30 to justify our education and our continuing participation in life with people? Reading, writing, still the basics, but right away there's trouble. Did you know that 22% of adult Americans are functionally illiterate? About 40 million people would not pass reading and writing. It's true. As for math, we should at least still be able to add and subtract and multiply and divide, even fractions. No algebra, though. If algebra is on the test, I'm going to get sent back to junior high for the rest of my life. What else? History? It's got to be on the exam. <clears throat> we get into continual peril because we lose track of the long, wide view of human experience. And basic civics, civics has got to be tested. When only 38% of the eligible voters show up at the polls at national elections, some of us need re-education about democracy. By age 30, we ought to be clear on matters of money, sex, health, and love, because nothing causes more grief lifelong than our ignorance and ineptitude on these items. So basic economics and personal finance has to be on the exam. Make a simple budget. Demonstrate knowledge of balancing a checkbook. Ha, right? 
if you haven't got sex edu- if you haven't got sex figured out by the time you're 30 you'd better go back to class basic health and first aid should be current but love may have to be left off the exam most of us will never learn what else what about knowledge of ethics law ecology and science sure but all of that is tidy fact stuff what about more sub- subtle things what should we know about 30 Uh, What should we know by 30 about art, music, literature? How about friendship, honor, courage, truth, beauty, happiness, hope, imagination, wisdom, humor, and death? Whoa, this is getting out of hand. It seems like a good idea when I began. I'm really, I'm already over questioned. And we haven't even dealt with the existential items such as why is there something instead of nothing? When will I have time? Who knows where the time goes? How deep is the ocean? How high the sky? When is enough enough? What are people for? Is there life before death? It is true that a little knowledge, is it true that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? And if birds fly over the rainbow, why can't I? (laughs) Yeah, that's a, well, I always say that was a good one. Think of all those things that we should know by 30. Think of all the things we've forgotten uh, back in the 30s. Hi, Gail. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. So testing, 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 testing. Yep. Um, that, yeah, the, uh, the citizenship exam. Hi, Ruth. Is really hard. I used to give parts of that to my students, and they, they had a hard time. Um, passing it. Hi, Janice. Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. I'm glad you're here. Um, okay. I'm going to be working on the cover for my, and I've decided to call it, I've, I've decided on a name for my winter concertina and I'm calling it winter solstice. And I already have the letters printed out on tissue paper. So that'll be the easy part. But I'm going to prep this like, you know, she always preps it. This is just a piece of the same paper. It's folded to fit the concertina. This is the the inside cover of the concertina. And then this is going to go like so. All right. And then there'll be ribbon to tie it shut like the other one and this will go like so and then it'll sit in here hi candy nice and snug with a a cover okay and that's what i'm going to be doing today um my plan that's the plan and this is all finished i think i showed the finished product last week so yeah I added some holly. I made a holly and berry stencil. So I added some holly leaves and berries. And yep, that's, I think that's about it that I added. Okay. So I've got the paper here ready to just glue down. So I like to do mindless things. That way you don't have to think too much and I can kind of keep an eye on the chat. This is the stencil I'm going to use. This is a stencil that I cut out of Yupo, 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 Ipo, Yupo, Yupo paper. And uh, so let me just get out the, let me do this. Let me get out the, the Modge Pod, not Modge Podge, Matte Medium. It's over here. I saw the neatest thing. Oh, I wanted to show you. I bought that. Oh, I bought that stamp. That that stamp uh, thing that I don't even know who showed it. Um, it was. I think it was in Kathy Berg's stream, and I don't know who showed it. We were laughing because we were all enabling and carrying on Colleen's tradition of being an enabler and if Colleen if you're laying out there in the background I'm 
thinking of you often and wishing you a speedy uh, recovery. But this is a really neat stamp set. And I ordered it on Amazon. -y. And I just want to show it to you because it is, I'm going to have to raise this because I, yeah, I don't know what to, that's the best I can do. Uh, you're coming in late. I, I am without my, uh, my computer. I'm, I'm doing this on a Chromebook. I'll put it this way. Is this not something? Look at this beauty. Now it's very similar to one of Timmy's that has a lot of these kind of stamps like this. But this, I think, was only $7. I mean, that's so cheap. And it's not Timu. I got it on Amazon. But um, so I was really excited. It's got a lot of neat things that you can use. And it's got uh, years, like 1957 to 1999. So this is a good one. Um, and I don't even know what it's called, but I got that. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to show you, look what I got from my I might as well show you some things I got. I bought some white card stock. I don't think I'll show that to you, but I got this beautiful card today. Well, I don't know when it was delivered. I got it. I got it out of my mailbox today. And I assumed uh, for my estate, I had a, a trust made. I created a trust for you. Know, so we can avoid going through probate when I go on to my wherever. Um, and this is the you know the law the law firm that created the trust. And I thought it was a Christmas card, but look at this. It's a Thanksgiving card. I thought it was beautiful. I think it's just I've had I don't think my only person I've ever gotten a Thanksgiving card from was my sister, who used to send cards for every occasion. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Sending our sincere gratitude and appreciation. May the good things in life be yours in abundance at Thanksgiving and throughout the new year. Estate Planning and Elder Law Center of Brevard. And that's the guy's signature. But I thought, yeah, I thought that was a really nice looking card. You know, not too much, just enough. Yeah. I really was impressed with that. The other thing I got, I might as well share with you, is I subscribe to a company that's called Field Notes. I have so many notebooks. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know why I subscribed. I don't think I renewed it, but every couple of months I get these notebooks. They're beautiful notebooks. They're little tiny notebooks that you can just carry around and, you know, Jot down your ideas. I, I have several that I, you know, many of them I have filled. Um, and, oh, look at that. And let's see. I never know who, what they're going to be. So they don't pay attention. So this is, um, ooh. Should send one of oh look at this. Okay, I'll have to send one to Colleen. It's got a barn on it. So you get you get a total of six notebooks. They're 48 pages each. They're memo. I like the graft because I don't like the line. And look, you never know. They included a uh, keychain. Sometimes it's a pen and a a calendar for next year. Cool. So that's what I got from Field Note. See, I'm trying to make an appointment for. Oh, wow. I hate that. We'll make something up. No, I mean, really. I mean, just make something up. Just a close proximation. Yeah, just make it up. <laughs> that reminds me of making stuff up. Many, many. I mean, Oh, ages and ages ago, my friend Nancy had come down to visit me in Florida. Um, we met at my parents' house when the, everyone, you know, was still alive, and we wanted to we wanted to rent a movie. So we went to the local Publix, right, and um, and we had to fill out all of the paperwork to get a uh, a card to rent movies. This is back when you rented movies, right? 
and I'm stumbling. It's asking for my social security number, and I'm stumbling. I and I can't remember. And my friend Nancy says she looks at me. She says, "Really, just make something up. No one's going to check your social security number." And I went, "Hell yeah, you're probably right. No one's going to check my social security number." So I just wrote down some random numbers that was matched the same numbers of how many numbers are on a social security number. I mean, sometimes they just, no one's ever going to look at it. Yeah, I have, to, well, yeah, I, I have to get the, I want to get the next vaccination too. I had to wait until November, which it is November because I had COVID. And once you've had COVID, you have to wait six months before you can, I guess, get the next vaccination because supposedly you are immune. I tell you, when I got COVID, I was shocked. I was very surprised. Uh, but I hear, I see more and more people. It seems to be popping up again, unfortunately. And I notice people wearing, some people are wearing masks again. And it is flu season, you know. I got my flu vaccination a while ago. What I really want to get, and I keep on procrastinating. I really want to get the uh, well, the COVID, but I really want to get the uh, shingles vaccination. I think that's something not to mess around with, and I have to make an appointment for that. Let's see, Gail saying uh, she got the covid dates. Well, they wanted to know, you know, when I had had my last vaccination, but I had a little vaccination card that they had issued when I got my first vaccination. So it showed where, you know, when, when I, when and where I got and what type of vaccination I got when I got the first, oops, got some uh, vaccinate. And when I got my first vaccination a couple of years ago. I mean, I've, I've been very lucky, you know, other than not lucky getting COVID, but I've never had any reaction to any of the vaccinations. I know a lot of people had reactions, you know, they were really tired or achy or I didn't have any reaction from any of them. And I know some people have gone in and gotten the flu shot, gotten the COVID vaccination and like another vaccination, like got all three at once and then really were knocked out. So I guess it's not a really good idea to do all of them at once. Give your body a chance to adjust. I'm just putting down, as you can see, background stuff, which is gonna cover. Let's see. Uh, Oh, you had shingles? Oh, Rosemary. Oh, my God. I understand it's just awful. I've had a couple of friends that have had it, and they just wanted, they were just, just miserable. Now, once you've had it, can you get it again? I mean, or do you now have an immunity to it? Oh, they gave you all three shots? Oh, my gosh. Didn't you not feel good? I mean, weren't you kind of knocked on your, your butt? Now, is this shingles thing now? I knew it used to be a series of, what, two shots or three shots? Is it still that or is it down to one? I can't remember. Whether they've gotten it down to one shot, I can't remember. My supplemental insurance pays for it, so but I think if you have Medicare, it's paid for. It's still two shots? Okay. And, and are they spaced like weeks apart or months apart. This is 
one of those things. I got to get off my arse and take care of it. Yes, I'll only get one shot at a time. Go back and get my flu shot. Yeah. Well, it's tis the season, you know. And I don't, well, I go food shopping. That's about it. And I, I, otherwise, I'm online shopping. And I could have my groceries delivered. Oh, my God, I got sick from my allergies and turned into bronchitis. Not to do with shots at all. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I'm very fortunate. I don't have any allergies as of this, as of now. I mean, I know that can change. People can become allergic to things that they've never been allergic to. And then all of a sudden find themselves allergic to things. But I've been very fortunate. I'll never forget one Thanksgiving. I was a volunteer fireman many, many years ago. And we got a, a call. And this woman, um, airway was starting to close up. And she was going into anaphylactic shock because she had had oyster stuffing. But she had been eating oysters and oyster stuffing her whole life. And she was in her 70s. And all of a sudden, she was deathly allergic. So you never know. Second shingle shot, nothing like the, oh, okay. Well, okay, ached all over, shivers, ugly. Yeah, that was a scary, very scary. And she was like, totally, couldn't understand it. She'd been eating oysters her whole life. Hi, Pam. Good to see you. So that must be a real shock. You think you're fine. You know, you've been eating a certain food your whole life. And then all of a sudden, your body decides to say, nope, not anymore. You're allergic now. Where I taught, and I had never heard of this until I came to Florida, until I started teaching at this private school, that they were, and now I guess it's a pretty uh, common thing, they were a peanut-free campus. And I had never heard of that before. There was one student who was extremely allergic to, to peanuts, you know, he had an, there was an EpiPen, you know, in the, in the office for him. And if he could even, if he even smelled peanuts, he might go into anaphylactic shock without having his EpiPen. And I had never, I had never heard of that before, but apparently it's more and more common. Yeah, you can develop allergies any point in your life. That's just downright scary. And then wasn't it the pharmaceuticals that decided that they were going to jack up the prices? Hi, Mary Lou, of the uh, EpiPens, like 700% increase. Bastards. I think Congress called them in. I mean, geez, that's just, that's just not right. As I recall, there was a big, they decided they were... Yeah, and then your time of your life, that's right. So what's uh, what would be bothering people now this time of year for allergy? Would it be uh, like the oak leaves or leaves or that kind of stuff? I mean, I know that it's seasonal. What would Mary Lou say? Covered by insurance, thank God, yeah. 
what? One year, my daughter's pen was $650. That's just not, that's just obscene. It's just obscene. Well, someone once explained to me that when a new drug hits the market, it's very expensive. And they allow the pharmaceuticals to charge a lot if it's a new product to recover their R&D, research and development costs. But once that's taken care of, then, hi, Susan, hi, that you should be able to, then they, then they, uh, the generic can come, the generic version can be produced and sold at a great reduction. But EpiPins, when they jacked the price up on the EpiPins, that was not a new product. They had been around for, that was not something new that they need to recover research and development costs for. They just were greedy and they thought they'd get away with it. That's like one of the lines in what I just read. When is enough enough? How much is enough? I mean, how much money do you really, I mean, it's people that are super wealthy, you know, how much money do you really need? And I was talking on, I think it was in uh, Kathy's stream last Thursday. I was talking about, um, this other way rock uh, space uh, space launches here um uh, and i said there were about once or twice a week uh, spacex this is elon's company and um uh, it, it's once a week every uh, every wednesday spacex is launching a rocket that's placing satellites in a low orbit and uh, it's starting to get a little crowded out there. I mean, we're talking about what goes up must come down. But once a week, once a week, they're launching this because I'm close enough that when they launch, I can, there's a, I can, there's a rumble and the, my windows will rattle. So I'm aware of, and I'm about eh, 20, 25 miles south of Cape Canaveral. So I'm, I know when that's about, when that's happening. Yep. Anything new and exciting out there? Anybody working on something? I know it's Christmas time. Last year, I made about 50 Christmas cards. I bought one of those paper packs from Echo Park, and I went on, what's her, May May Ken or May, yeah, May I or May May Ken or May May Do, whatever. And she had a video where she made, I think, 50 cards out of one paper pack. So I made, I followed her lead and made 50 cards. I mean, they were, they were homemade. But they were not pay so much less than it was. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm getting there, folks. Now, you know, this is all going to get covered with paint. And well, I'm, I, I'm using those acrylic inks that I bought a while ago. The off brand, they're not Timmy, they're not. Uh, uh, the expensive brand and I unfortunately I don't remember the the name of them oh they were they're 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 the mount 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 mart brand which is kind of a less expensive brand of art products and I've bought a lot of their products over the years like their gesso and stuff Pack, pack, pack. Yes. Yep. Mary Lou's moving. And she's a packing stuff up. And untangling balls of yarn. 
<laughs> yeah. And just think, when you get that all sorted and given away or thrown out or whatever, you'll have less to move and you'll have less to unpack and then you can start all over again. You can start filling, filling up the, you know, the containers and you get a clean slate. You get to start all over again. Now, I was thinking of moving, buying a bigger house. Um, but if I bought a bigger house, all I would do would be fill it with more stuff. And... I don't need to do that. There was a house uh, for sale that was just down the street, like three houses down the street. And it was kind of a duplex in the sense that it shared, it shared garages, but it had a two car garage. You know, I would like, I have a one car garage and it is a very small one car garage. When I bought my latest car, I had to literally take a measuring tape. I had to measure the car to see whether it would fit in the garage. Um, and when you go online to get the dimensions of a car, they'll give you, they'll tell you how wide the car is, but they don't include the side mirrors. That makes no sense because the side mirrors are part of the width of the car. And so I remember going down and looking at a Buick Encore and I brought a measuring tape with me and I said, you know, it, you know, when you go to look for the width of the Encore, it doesn't include, it says, it'll tell you, this is the width without the side view mirrors. So we measured it and it wouldn't fit in the garage. So I didn't get it. Yes, Mary Lou's gonna have a new craft didn't you? Oh, she, I think she said there's a shed in the back, but it's not big enough to be a she shed. Yep. Let me just dry this side. I'm going to do the other side and then we'll get some paint out and paint this puppy up. Stencil it up a little bit. Happy packing. Yeah. Hey, Ruth, did you get any of the. Uh, the storm, I asked my son yesterday, he was in Cape Cod yesterday, and I asked him whether they got any of the storm, because they I did hear the word nor'easter, but he said, nah, they just were getting a little, a little rain and wind, but nothing. I scratched the side, but I'm, I'm trying to get, oh, okay, all right, yeah. And, you know, these houses, when this house was built, I think it was 1986, and someone said, well, cars were not that big then. I said, what do you mean? Cars were a lot bigger than they are now. I mean, you look at the big, I mean, you're talking about this. So I didn't get the Encore. What I needed was I needed, I wanted a car that had, an. you didn't get much, no, ours was like this, this the no-name storm that lasted three days. Um, what I was looking for was an automatic hatch because I was having trouble lifting the hatch of my the car that I had, which was a Honda HRV, which I love. But I really, because I have two bad shoulders, I was having trouble lifting the hatch. So I was looking for a car that had an automatic back hatch. In my price range, mind you, and that was the key in my price range. And the Buick Encore had that feature. But then I found that uh, Mazda had a car that had that feature. It's the CX-30. So I just push a button and the hatch opens. Yeah, I know. The, oh, yeah, the Oldsmobile, those were like boats back in the day. So... So the, this Mazda CX-30 fits in the garage. I mean, but I, yeah, they used to be huge. 
the big fins. You remember the Cadillacs with the hi Chris with the with the big fins and the big bumpers and all that chrome and the big steering wheels. Everything was big. Because that's when gasoline was 15, 16 cents a gallon, too. And it didn't matter that the V8 got 15 miles to the gallon. Who the hell cared? Oh, I can smell the paper. Yeah, with the fins. You remember that? Yeah, the big fins. They're like boats, you know, and you have the rumbling down the road. The Oldsmobile, uh, the Ford Crown Vic. That's got a cop car like thing. And those things are huge. They still make the Crown Vic. Um, that's for sure. Yeah, my father was a, a real, he took great delight in getting really good gas mileage, you know. And I laughed because he would obsess over getting 30 miles to the gallon. And now to, nowadays, that's not any great feat to get 30 miles to the gallon. But back in the day, that was a big deal to get 30 miles. I probably shouldn't bother folding this until I'm done with the other side, right? That makes no sense. Let me do this. She did both sides. Okay. I guess I get. And I only do. I don't go on any long trips. I hey. I saw gas here yesterday or Friday when I took my computer in for two eighty seven a gallon. I can't remember the last time I saw gas under three dollars a gallon. And I need gas too. And I should have filled up. You know, I fill up my tank. It lasts me forever because I don't I don't go anywhere. But I'm traveling up to Cape Canaveral for Thanksgiving. And I, I need gas. And I was supposed to go to Vero Beach to have lunch with my sister-in-law, Leslie. But she was sick and canceled. So I don't know when I'm going to see her. I watch my grandson play hockey on Friday night and they won and he scored a goal but the cutest thing uh, apparently they went to a Grizzly game and a Grizzly is like a, a professional hockey team in Utah and I or actually it's a college I think maybe it's a college hockey team and, um, yeah, yeah, I guess it's a college Weber State hockey team. Anyway, I won't bore you with the whole story, but what happened was he was invited to, to go to the locker room and meet the coach and the players. And um, he was very excited. And then they asked him, and apparently this is a, a big honor, if he would like to read the starting lineup for that night's game. So my, my son has it on, on video and it's so cute because he's so nervous. He's 12 years old and oh, here are all these big, you know, college hockey players and he's reading the lineup of who's going to start in the game. And he was so concerned. He kept on saying, did I pronounce your name right? And they would say, yeah, you did a good job. And then it, when it was all said and done, they they gave him a team jersey, which they all signed. So he was telling me about it today, and he was he was very excited, telling it what had happened. And he did a really good job. And then the coach said to him, "Do you have any? Did you?" <laughs> yes. The coach said, well, do you have any words for the team? And he said, well, um, he said, well, go out there. And he said, and, and don't die. <laughs> and everyone laughed. And then the coach said, well, do you have anything else to say? And then he said, well, 
he cursed. He said, kick their, kick, kick their asses, and they all laughed, and that was the only thing that came to mind was, well, don't, don't die. That was fun for him. He was very excited. And they have a girl, they have a girl goalie. And she started on Friday night. Her name is Addison, Addie, and she did a really good job. And they won like six to zero. And she even caught uh, one of the pucks, you know, caught it in her mitt that came at the goal. She caught it. She reached up her hand and caught it. Very impressive. Isn't that cool? Girl is playing hockey. Now, I don't know, you know, obviously, as they get older. But at this level, this is a team. It's a traveling team. And uh, I think they're 12, 13-year-olds. And boy, do they travel. One weekend, Reed was in Las Vegas, and the next weekend, he was in Vail, Colorado. And uh, this weekend, they were home in Salt Lake City. But they play at the Oval, the skating Oval, where the Winter Olympics were held when the Winter Olympics were in Utah. That's where that's that's their home rink where they where they skate, which is pretty cool. They got a lot of they have a lot of indoor family activities in Utah. They have like play centers, like fun centers, and you pay you know a fee, and then you go in and there's all these things where kids can run around and play and in, in, in the middle of the winter. And they have splash, they have splash parks. Now you would think they would have those in Florida and they, if they do, they don't have very many of them, but they have these really neat splash parks where you can go in the summertime. And, uh, It's just like puddle deep water, right? And they've got like water guns and things where you can just play in the water. It's like a, it's like, it's like a, a water sandbox kind of like it's like a sandbox. It's kind of like the concept of playing in a sandbox, but it's water. Because I've been to a couple of those with them when I go to visit. I went last year for my birthday. I'm not going to do it this year, I don't think. I'm coming along. And I'm yakking away about nothing. My pet peeve of the week is, if you want to really know, apparently... I don't know about you, but it seems to me that they keep on adding another layer of people in the healthcare industry, another layer that removes you one more person from your primary doctor. It's like one more person that's there uh, and or receptionist. Case in point, I had to call to renew a prescription, right? And I talked to, I didn't talk to the regular receptionist. Her name is Ginny. And every time Ginny answers the phone, when I call, I can't tell you how relieved I am because I know if Ginny's going to take, you know, the prescription, I know it's going to be filled. There's not going to be any screw up, none whatsoever. And on Friday, I called and I spoke to a John. I don't know who the hell John is. And he said, well, I'll make sure this gets back to the clinicians. Okay. I want to talk to my Jenny. And then they ask you, well, how many days do you have left in your prescription? 
right? This was Thursday. I said, I have five. He said, okay. Well, prescription was not filled. And guess what? Tomorrow is five days. And now I have to call and bitch. Just, and I can check the app on the pharmaceutical app and they'll tell you, it'll say in progress, which means they have the prescription. You have to go, okay, Gail, take care. Thank you for stopping by. It's always great to see you. So now I am out. And I am not happy. I don't know who John is. And what his layer in. Just more and more people that can screw it up. You know, it's like when you play telephone. I know I, sh I should have. Absolutely. I won't. I won't be truthful the next time. Believe me. You know, remember the old telephone game you play and you'd have a message and you would whisper it into somebody's ear. And by the time it went all around the classroom and it got back and the last person to hear the message would say what it was and it didn't sound like anything that the original message was. Well, it's like it's like that. They keep on adding more and more people into the system. And it's, you know, it's, it's like it's like produces more areas where it can not work, where the whole thing breaks down. And I talked to the doctor's receptionist, Ginny, and then it went to the doctor. That was two people involved. Now we've got a third person involved. John, whoever the hell John is. I'm not impressed with John. I'll call tomorrow morning. And I probably won't talk to John. I'll talk to somebody else. And now, I don't know about where you guys are, but now they have something here in Florida called a hospitalist. Yeah, I should have done that. You know, you start calling because there is a thing on the app that I can, you know, renew the prescription, even though there's no refills, I can click that button and, and it'll, it'll tell me, you know, I'll get a little notice saying it's gonna, it'll take longer because I don't have any refills, but then they contact the doctor's office and I should have done that. I've done that in the past and that seemed to work really well. And I should have done that, but, but now do they have hospitalists where you guys live? A hospitalist is a person that basically, um, is between you and your doctor, now they've thrown a, a middle person in who's known as a hospitalist. So that means, I guess, your doctor doesn't come visit you when you're in the hospital. Not had, yeah, they have that here. It's another, it's a whole new branch of medicine. I don't know. And they're called hospitalists. Again, it's another barrier removing you one step further from your doctor. Pisses me off. So that's my pet peeve. And all of that just adds to the cost, right? Doesn't make it more. Let's see. Yes. If you go to the hospital, you don't see your own doctor. You, you see the, okay. So you, they have hospitalists in California. Yep. Because I'll date myself. I remember when you got sick, the doctor came to the house. I remember that. That's how old I am. And I think now they have what they call, what they call it, concierge doctors. That you can pay like a ridiculous amount of money to have a concierge doctor. Like $30,000 extra. And they'll come to the house. And, uh, and, and these guys, 
they just they they have a, a relatively small group of they have a, a, a relatively small number of patients. But it's just one more area where the, where the communication can break down. That's all. All right, that's my pet peeve of the week. Not you there yet? But they have them in California. Yeah. Well. It's interesting. I mean, I'm thinking how much does someone who decides they graduate from medical school and they become a hospitalist. I mean, is that for the people that almost flunk out? I don't know. It's a horrible thing to say, but they don't seem to have to possess a whole lot of knowledge. But you remember when the doctors came? Yeah, I remember when the doctor came. You know, he would have like uh, morning hours in his office and in the afternoon or, or maybe the other way around, whatever. And then you knew you were going to get a shot when he told your mom to put some water on. Remember my mom putting water on to boil and they would have the glass syringe and they would boil, they would sterilize the glass syringe at my house in a saucepan. And then you knew you were getting a shot as soon as you heard that you need to boil some water. You go, no, I don't want a shot. I remember, I even remember his name. Dr. Abby was his name. Coming to the house. He was a nice guy. He was a nice doctor. Even if he had to give me a shot. Oh, and okay, when you had the mumps. Okay, doctor came to the house. My mother had her tonsils removed while sitting on her mother's lap in the kitchen. I can't imagine that. That just is. Yeah, that's a little bit. But. I mean, I understand some of this, but I just, you know, you keep on, you know, putting another layer between you and your doctor, just, you know, well, especially when it's not efficient. And of course, tomorrow when I call, I'm going to have to be really nice and not curse and swear and carry on. I have to be very polite. Otherwise... I know, I know. Well, my, but that was back in the day. I know that's a little extreme. Yeah, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And she doesn't remember it. I mean, she just knows it happened. My son has his tonsil removed in the hospital. I don't think he spent the night. Yeah, I <laughs> afraid of the doctor. Yeah, but Dr. Abby was cool, but he was the family, he was the GP, you know, the general practitioner. Uh, he's the guy you went to. I remember, uh, when I was a kid, this boy in the neighborhood who was a real jerk, he started throwing rocks at me. And he hit me in the back of the head with a big rock. And I had to go to Dr. Abby and I had to have stitches. I think he put a butterfly. And there was another time when I fell off my bike and tore open my arm and my knee and my mother had gone back to bed after my dad had gone to work and I went in and I said, I woke her up. I said, mom, 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 I think I need stitches. And I had laid open the whole part of my, my arm and my knee. And she was like, Oh my God. And I think I ended up with, I don't know, 20 stitches. 
I laid open this whole, well, you can't see it, but this whole part of my, well, actually, the scar is still there, believe it or not. Wow, it's still there after all those years. If you get John, say, yeah, I'll, I, if I get John, I'm going to say, hey, John, five days is up, and I'm out. What are the chances of getting it filled today? You know, I even, I don't know about you, but when I talk to somebody on the phone and they, now they, they tell you their name, they'll say, hello, this is so-and-so. So I try to remember that, which is not easy for me, but I try to remember that. So that when I'm done and with the conversation, I can always say, like I said to him, I said, well, thank you, John. And when I hung up, I didn't just hang up. I kind of took a, you know, a mental note of who was helping me well, then, or who was not helping me. I think I will fold this. This is a little wet. All right, let's get the thingy. How are we doing out there? We're hanging in there, I hope. Thanks for hanging around and listening to me jabber about John. Now, maybe John did his job and someone else. White little girl my mother took me to get a work, a work cut off. Oh my gosh, candy. That's, I would not suspect that of you. Her candy went wild. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Well, when my mother grew up, they actually, her family didn't, my, you know, my grandfather never was a working guy. You know, they never had any money to speak of. And it, they actually lived in the doctor's house. I mean, downstairs, they, they rented a, like, a, like a little apartment in the, in the doctor's house. I want to do that. Hang on. And, um. She would help her with her math homework at night. <laughs> My mother, another math phobia. And she said she could remember sitting at the kitchen table and the doctor helping her, try, trying to help her with her math. Let's see. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's coming along, right? When they when they got home, they rubbed the something. She rubbed the potato on my hand, buried it. The wart went away. Oh, okay. So potato skin or potato. Okay. The healing power of the potato. You know, I actually I remember. And I don't even know when, how long ago this was, but they were they were having great success with potato skins, the skin of the potato, putting that on burn victims. I mean, people who are massively burned, and this is before they probably had all well, the newer technology, but um, this was in India. And there was a lot of children that were badly burned because there was a lot of the homes in India, the poor homes that had open fires. I mean, like a fire, like in the middle of the kitchen or whatever, just an open fire. So a lot of kids, a lot of children were badly burned because of these open fires. And they were, they were experimenting with putting potato skins on the burns and um, how they, that seemed to promote new, new skin growth. Why I would remember that, I have no idea. I just thought that was pretty fascinating. And when Candy talked about potatoes, now I had the planter's wart on my big toe. Oh, God. I remember going to the podiatrist and having that removed. That was not a fun experience. All right, I'm going to... Oops, put some stuff on this. 
All right. It's winter, so I want to use blues. I'm going to use blue. And this is the little acrylic ink set that I bought. This is teal. I like teal. And, oh, phyllo blue. How about teal and phyllo blue? It's phyllo, right? P-H-T-H. P-H, which is F. And TH, which is F. So it's like Philo Blue. It's like, that's an odd. I just looked at that spelling. That's kind of odd. Philo, Philo. Hi, Miss Angie. How are you? Good to see you. I hope things are all good with you in Tennessee. Do this. Get a squirt of water. Ah, water, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. And let's see. Whoops. No, I don't want to use that. No, 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 no. Okay, let me get. Oh, I got this new brush. It's one of these mop brushes. Have you ever seen these? This is so cool. It's got this plastic around it, and I have a feeling that you're supposed to leave that on there. But there's, like, copper wires that hold this. But it really, I mean, it's like watercolor, but it holds a lot of, it holds a lot of water. Let me just see. I mean, it's, like, soupy. So let's see what we can do here. Get some nice blue, wintry blue, a cold blue. I couldn't, I, I thought something was wrong because this is so short, you know, compared to the, I'm thinking, well, it's only the cover. It's not five feet long like the other part of it is. Ah, it's a pretty blue, isn't it? Party blue. I like it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Make it real wet. Juicy. Juicy. Juicy, juicy. Maybe that's all I'm going to, maybe I won't use the other blue. I like this. Maybe I'll just use this and then the stencil. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I'm just rethinking it now. Maybe. They, oh, that's right. Thalo. Thalo. You forget the pH. Thalo, right? Like halo. Thalo. Okay. That yeah. That that makes yeah. That sounds familiar to me. Yeah. Thalo. You know, I'm thinking. I know that's a dangerous thing. I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking maybe just. Let this, I'm going to, oh dear, I got some, oh, I got some caca on it. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I'll turn this over and I'll use the other blue on the other side, but instead of using the, the stencil that I thought I was going to use, I think I might just use the snowflake stencil. <laughs> Danji, Mel and I are having a heated conversation about, oh, snoring. Oh, boy. Man, my ex was a snorer. Ooh. Holy mackerel. Talk about sawing logs. Woo-wee. You can hear them. Down upstairs, we would be downstairs snoring. If you can hear him upstairs, candy. Oh my gosh, 
Is that the remedy? Put a sock in his mouth? Well, now they have those beds, you know, the temper Tempur-Pedic bed that automatically senses that your mate is snoring and it'll automatically lift the bed, I think, which is pretty interesting. I like the way it's kind of dribbling. Um, and I'm going to turn this over and I'll put the other blue on the other side. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to use the uh, snowflake stencils and throw some snowflakes on it. I've got the letters all cut out. And I printed them on uh, tissue paper so that when I glue them down, you know, the tissue paper will disappear. And I already did that. Angel snore, we call them in our house. Angel snores, okay. That's a nice way of, it's an interesting, is it a euphemism? Is that the right word, is that a euphemism? An interesting thing to call snoring. Um, with my thing. Uh, okay. What do you think is my thing? Uh, oh, there it is. Give that a little dab a doo, dab a doo dee. Do, 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 do. I buy those things and they come in a big tub and I cut them up, the blue things. <sighs> maybe, maybe, maybe instead of snowflakes, maybe just white splatters to make it look like snow. Maybe that's a night, another idea. Another idea. Maybe I'll do that. I can smell the paper. That's true. Yes, it's totally it totally is. Yes, it's a nice way of self acceptance. Since neither, yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't think I snore, but I don't know. I can't hear me. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I do snore. Don't like that, but I can fix that. My son snores. My youngest son snores. I'm a very light sleeper. Yeah, the white splatters would be easy, right? I want to do easy. And let's see what phthalo blue looks like. Hmm. It's interesting. It's a little bit more purpley, don't you think? Whoops. I almost spilt it. I almost knocked that over. Not good. Let me give it some water. That's the color, isn't it? Phalo. As in halo. Get some more water. More water. Make it really wet. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It looks like the other blue, but it's not because when you turn it over, you can see that the uh, the teal is much more turquoisey. But this mop, this type of mop brush it holds a lot of water so 
So I was messing around with my little cats and I made painted, I made pattern papers on Thursday during the, my chat. It's no longer a chat room since Facebook took our room away from us. So we're, we're trying to get together in using other means of when I made patterned papers to make clothing for these little cats that appear in that book, painting cats. And uh, then someone suggested maybe I should use material. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Yep. You could remove it. Mm -hmm. I could. That's a thought. But I think I like the easy. Because you can still see the. The. The underpants. you doing Lily? Lily's right over here sitting on the back of the chair with her legs draped over the chair just looking at me. It's still pretty warm here. I'm still running the AC which I'm not happy about but you know, I open the windows and then it might be cool out, but the humidity was just awful. So then I'd close the windows, and then I'd open the windows, and I'd close the windows, and I'd open the windows, and I figured, oh, screw it. I'll just leave, leave the AC on until it's really cold. Maybe not now until my, maybe January. I don't know. You see that blue? And it is. Look how different that is. I like it though. Just let this, let's just let this run away. Take a run, a drip. I mean, I could add more water, but it's pretty, it's pretty soapy. I mean, it's pretty sopped. <clears throat> let's see right now. He is, but he said he will try chin strap. I know only lasts two minutes. That's all, yeah. All right. Let me try to dry a little bit because I don't want to. I like that. Let's see. I'll just dry a little bit and see what happens. And then we'll take it from there. That's pretty good. So anyway, back to the cats. And I'll show it to you. I'll have time to show it to you. It's only what? The thing is. It's only 6.18. So I'll have time to show that to you. And someone suggested, I think Ruth suggested, you can do that out of uh, scraps. So I tried sewing some little clothing out of scraps. Okay, Mary Lou, thanks for being here. Take care. Keep it packing. So I made two little outfits out of scraps. And what I did was I sewed the, I drew the, the outfit on really thin, like composition notebook paper, really thin stuff. And I drew the little outfit. And then I sewed the, the the scrap onto the drawing of the outfit and then i just left the paper on and i figured i'm gonna have to glue that onto something else one where i have to then draw the body of the cat and for, i've made a concertina or type of folio thing uh, and now i'm thinking of the background and these people have been painting those 
They're really cute. They're like those watercolor trees. I don't know if you've seen them. They're like uh, like little lollipop type of things. And you can you doodle them. I thought they would make a nice background for the kitties. And I've got some stamps I might want to use. And I just have some different, uh, some other stencils. Um, I have some Patty Tully Parish stencils that are really cool. That I think would be cool. So that's what I'm thinking. But isn't that a big difference? Boy, you wouldn't even. That's amazing. That is different. Isn't it? Huh. Okay. All right. All right. My B for bye went away. <laughs> Yay, bye. Yay, yee, yee. Yee, Mary Lou. Now, my big concern is... Let me get these out of there. These are very handy. I, I bought a set of four of these little porcelain thingies. They're like for dipping sauces, but they're really kind of neat to put paint in. Ah. This. Ah. My concern is, let me see. My letters, okay, they will. All right. This is the letters that I printed out. Oh, you'll be able to see that. Oh, that'll be great. I, and I have winter. And I think I'm, I'm going to call it winter solstice. It's going to be the title of this piece. I've already got those done. I think this will be on the inside because I screwed that up. But maybe I can fix that and just go like that. Here we go. There we go. I got a little blue left here. All right. Okay. But this thing holds an enormous amount of water. It's it's definitely a mop. Let me just dry that a little bit. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to do I think I'm going to do um I think I'm going to do the white splatters. Um, to give you that snow effect. I'm just because I'm honestly, I am lazy and uh, and the, the snowflake stencil, uh, you know, if, the, if you don't get a perfect stencil, then it kind of bleeds out and it, it kind of makes a mess. So I'm thinking just white splatters would be um, that would work. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, now, I wonder, I have white acrylic. I don't know what that would look like. I'm eating a jello. Oh, are you talking about the, the original jello cake, Angie, where you poke, you know, the back of a wooden spoon into the cake? And then you pour, you pour Jello or something like that. And so when you cut it, it's like, is that the Jello cake that I'm thinking? I wonder how white this is. I'll do it on this side because that's going to be on the inside. Because I remember making that Jello cake. Is anybody else? Let's see. Whoa. It's a blizzard. That's okay. <clears throat> Is that... 
it's pretty white, but I wonder whether white paint wouldn't be whiter. I think I'll use white paint. You're getting all snuggled up for a winter's nap. Make a cake, boil water, and mix the jello. Put holes in the cake. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, put in refrigerator to cool. Then <gasps> whipped cream. Oh my God, Angie. Nothing's finer than whipped cream frosting. I can't stand that buttercream frosting. Either cream cheese or whipped cream. Oh, Angie. You're doing it up right, girl. Woo-wee! That sounds marvelous. Oh, gosh. Really sounds good. Now, my problem is I don't have any more of those little porcelain things. Just wait on. Wait, wait, wait. One second. I've got one in the kitchen. I shall return. Don't go anywhere. Oops. Let me get up. Ah. Oh. I bought a Roku box for my TV. Uh, now I don't know why. Oh, I know why. Uh, Deb Farrell is making this really cool movie themed journal for her niece and it's being commissioned by I guess her niece's mother and she's making it's movie themed and on Thursday we had so much fun talking about all the old movies because she's got pictures of the thin man William Powell uh the thin man and Charlie Chan and we just went, we were just going through all of these old movies. And I thought, oh, I would love to sit down and watch a Charlie Chan movie. I would love to watch The Thin Man. And there, you can't find them for free. But then I somehow I ended up finding in Roku they were on for free. Um, but that's why I think I bought a Roku box. Can't have jello without whipped cream. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, well, cool. Do you use the, the whipped cream in the can? Do you used to just squirt in your mouth, you know? Or the Cool Whip? Not a Cool Whip fan. But I like the, 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 the whipped cream in the can. That's a really pretty decent. Because to, to whip cream from scratch... It's a bit of a bother, you know? It's not that easy to do. I want to know what Angie's, what Angie, what kind of whipped cream, Angie? Are you making it from scratch or are you doing the stuff in the can, the aerosol can, or are you doing the Cool Whip? I remember when Cool Whip first came out, everyone was like, yuck. And then people would freeze it and eat it like ice cream. Never that much of a fan of, I can't use that brush because I can't. Let's see, make a cake. Waiting for Angie to get back to us to see what's the, what's the lowdown on the Cool Whip. Ah, a cup of Cool Whip. Okay. All right. Well, Cool Whip has come a long way. From the original Cool Whip. That is for sure. Oh, I'm looking for my... Oh, here it is. I'm not a very good splatterer. I mean, some people always have a, the perfect technique and they can just get the perfect splatter. I don't possess that skill. And I don't know whether it's because I don't have enough water... That's why I'm kind of practicing on this side. Get the kind of the technique down. I think this needs more water, though. It's got to be pretty soupy. Hi, Barbara. Oh, 
Barb Ra. Ra, Ra, Ba, Ra. The Chicken Pot Pie Society. How are things up in Canada? Oh, okay. See, it's snowing. That's working for me. That is just fine. Look, I missed. <laughs> it's just fine and dandy, okay? Whoops. When I drop my computer off, you can see it's got it's got paint all splattered on it. You can tell it's it's a working computer in a art room. I like that. It's a blizzard. That's gonna look good. I feel confident now that I can do it on the other side. And I won't screw it up. The Three Stooges. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We were talking about the Three Stooges. And our consensus was that we were not, I mean, I was. And I think the other ladies, we decided that we weren't really big fans of the Three Stooges. I mean, I got nervous because, I, you know, I, I was really afraid that they were poking one another's eyes out. You know what I mean? The, I thought they were, they kind of scared me. But I could, I love the Thin Man. Because if you notice in the Thin Man, they were always smoking and they were always drinking. Yet they were able to solve mysteries. And there was the puppy dog, Aster. Oh, that, that, those were, and there was only like, I think, four or five movies in that series. Because I looked it up. Um and the Little Rascals, oh my gosh, I could watch every single Little Rascal episode again. Uh, I love the Little Rascals. They used to be on when my kids were getting ready for school, they used to be on. You know what I mean? Okay, Candy. And then, of course, the Marx Brothers and the classic duck soup. We were talking about those kind of movies and they just don't make anything like that anymore. I mean, I feel, I feel so old. All's good in Canada. That's good. How's the weather? Is it getting? Well, Carol's already had snow. She posted some pictures a while back. And I just remember like the original Rascals with Alfalfa and Spanky and uh, Dora. Was Dora the one that he had the crush on? Yep. And Groucho Marx, remember he had a TV show. We'll be 58 in December. Well, good for you. Oh, you I, okay? You had snow before the week before Halloween. Okay. Well, you're a spring chicken, there, Angie. You're a youngin. Well, you don't look a day over 50. Just saying. Not that I've ever seen you, but I'm just guessing. Darla. Okay, Darla. Yes. And Alfalfa, and Eddie Murphy's version of Alfalfa on Saturday Night Live. Oh, my God. Oh, Lordy, was that funny or what? What? Yes, and the duck came down. And I can't remember. Oh, what the heck was the name of it? And they, they would be a married couple, and he would ask them uh, questions. And he always had that big cigar. What the hell was the name of that show? This is your life, no. 
I'm thinking about all these old TV shows. But you feel old. You got old bones? Uh, well, that's not fun. Old bones is not fun. I'm old and have old bones. And honestly, I honestly, I did not think you bet your life. Thank you, Barbara. That's it. You bet your life. I didn't think I would be in as bad shape as I am. I mean, I really had great plans to travel and do a lot of stuff, but it's not in the cards. But you know what? It could be a lot worse, right? Oh, got a little constellation up there. Looks like I ended up creating Orion up in the corner here. Oh, I should have looked. Oh, that's what I should have looked up. I should have looked up to see what the winter sky looked like. And I could have put in some winter constellations. Uh, it's okay. Bing, 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 bing. You bet your life. That was it. You bet your life. And it, was there money? I guess he asked them questions, right? Like history type questions. And they got, they won money, as I recall. Does anybody remember Queen for a Day and how pathetic and sad? No, absolutely, Candy. You're right. Queen for a day. That was such a, I found it. Uh, now I've got spl splattering my, I just got some paint in my mouth. Queen for a day would be this poor housewife. And then I don't know how they got picked to be queen for a day, but they would, they would get like, I don't know, like a new washing machine or something like that. And it was just so sad. And then, you know, there'd be this frumpy old woman and then they would, you know, they, they would call her out of the audience, I think. Uh, oh, that's right. Let's see. She has how many children she had. She would play. She like, he likes the cards. He takes it out. <laughs> I remember that was that was one of his classics lines. Yep, that's right. Yeah, we got a we got a buffalo style blizzard going on here. When you have a an inch of snow falling every hour. There. This is gonna look pretty cool. I know, I saw that Rosalind Carr passed away, 96 years old. Now, Jimmy's still alive, isn't he? I think he's in, he's in hospice, though, but I think he's still alive. Well, speaking of that one, we were talking about W.C. Fields and Mae West. And, of course, Mae West's famous line is, is that a pistol in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Another classic line. And I was telling them about, uh, I had read a biography of W.C. Fields. And he was a staunch atheist and he was in the hospital and a friend came to visit him and he was sitting in the hospital bed and he was leafing through the Bible and the friend was kind of shocked. They said, Bill, I thought you were an atheist. And he said in his WC voice, I'm just looking for loopholes. It was a classic line of his.
I got these little lumps here and I don't want to, maybe I'll just leave them and they'll dry. Indeed, another classic, yes. And then, of course, you had the little rascals, Pete, the dog with the spot. But anyway, we had a great time uh, just talking about all of these old movies and how I've got white paint speckled all over everything. Everything is all got, but that's okay. So this is going to be, I'm happy. I am happy with how this turned out. It's simple. And now I'm just going to punch holes. I've got the, I'm very, very, very happy with it. I am simple. It's snowy. It's blue. It's going to be cool. Well, didn't Turner TNT? I don't even know. Is TNT still on? Turner Classic TNT, right? They have TCN, Turner Classic, TCM, right? Turner Movie Classics. I don't even know whether that's still on or not, but you could get, I mean, they would have, you know, good classics, older movies. Yeah, TMC, Turner Movie Classics, I think is the name of the channel. All right. Let me put this in so I can put the letters on. to t say that making these is a lot of fun because you can just whatever you're feeling about you know this is basically winter and what how you feel about winter and I did one for fall I did the fall one what do you think folks it's upside down Huh. Oh, leave it to me to put it in upside down. Oh, shoot. Let's see. No. If you Google a movie, it'll tell you where to, yeah, yeah, it'll tell you where or where, where you can watch it. Yep. Oh, it's not upside down. Because I put some of it's upside down and some of it's right side up. Yep. Charlie Chan with number one son and uh, um, she has some really good ones in this beautiful journal that she's making. Uh, and her niece is probably going to be thrilled. It, 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 and she said her niece is really going to use it for a journal. So there's a lot of writing spots where she can actually write in it. Okay. Yeah, this is upside down, but it's sideways in which every which way. Okay. All righty. So I think that's, that's a good fit, right? And then when you open it. You can look at it this way, or you can, it's about five feet long, but then you can just look at it this way. Here's the house, my snowman, and the deer, doe deer, and the little boy shoveling snow, and the church, and then the end. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh -huh. Okay. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got plenty of time. Perfect. Get my little letters out. I hope I put that letter back. 
Oh my gosh. I hope I put it back from where I found it. Otherwise, if I laid it here, I'm never going to see it again. Oh, please, please, please. I'm so afraid. I showed you the, what I show you? I showed you the W. And, um, oh, man, man, I hope you didn't lay it over here somewhere because you're never going to see it again. You've got such a bloody mess over here. Well, let's just make sure. Let's just look before you get all pissy about it. Oh, there it is. There it is. So I stamped these all out. Whoops. And I did them on tissue paper so that when I glue them on, the tissue paper will kind of disappear, right? So I'm thinking of doing this. this a little bit more like so as long as I get it started right oops hmm. like so have it like on a slant And then S O L Oops S You don't know. Well, I can move it up. <clears throat> May not fit. Oh, we'll make it fit. We'll make it fit. Winter. Solstice. We'll just squish it in. So winter solstice. One is on a Christmas tree. Oh, good for you. Oh, the journal is shaped like a Christmas tree. Oh, that's, that's very clever. Okay. All right. Let's just make sure I don't put anything upside down. I initially had spelt Saltus incorrectly. I left out the second S, uh, which is no surprise to me because spelling is not my forte. Spell check was like a gift from heaven. Well, that's a good idea to make it the shape of a Christmas tree. Is it going to be like a December daily or it's just a, just a journal just to have fun with? All right. So my plan is that if this works out the way it's supposed to work out, right? When I put W down, the tissue paper should pretty much disappear. Almost. I thought about using uh, the napkin. Oops, the white of the napkin. That may have been a better choice. But this is okay. Uh, 
finger got stuck. I'm going to have all that glue to peel off my fingers. Just a journal to write in. That's great, though. I'm a journaler. I write pretty much every day. And I'm journaling. I think I've told you. Oh, I be careful and oh you screwed it up no you didn't yes you did just leave it alone leave it alone you tore it just leave it alone let it be i journal in a composition notebook and i um uh, i write with a fountain pen and i want the ink to bleed through and so on the page where it bled through i i make a little collage out of junk mail a lot of times it's the junk mail I received that day. All right. It's spelled correctly. The solstice is going to be a little trickier. But we will manage. <laughs> yep. I'm kind of concentrating. So, excuse me for not talking. just cut a piece of that off. Uh, tempted to jelly plate, I know. Okay, let's just stick this here like so. I think it's going to fit. It should. Yeah, it'll fit. Yeah. Here we go. Ooh. Yep, 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 yep. And a C. And a C. And give me an A. Give me an A for what do we got? Winter solstice. Yay. The shortest day of the year. Solstice, right? Is that spelt right? Doesn't look right, but I think it is. Hi, Brenda. Oh, thank you, Angie. Yes. 
And you know what? This conversation I've had, I would have this conversation whether I was streaming or not. I talk to myself a lot. It's fine, you know? No back talk. No back talk. Good to see you, Brenda. And Lily just moaned. Okay. Now, this is a little wet, but we're going to go here. I'm going to punch a hole here. Because, yeah, I'll punch a hole here. And I've got some really pretty ribbon. I've got some blue ribbon. And I'm going to punch a hole here. Oh, that's dry enough. I can do that. And then put some these things on it, which I'm going to paint black. You know, the little thingies. The other one I put like a grommet, a quarter inch grommet in. But I think I'll just do this with the hole. Put it right about here. And that's, and that's it'll, it'll, but I want to let that dry. I don't want to mess it up. And actually what I probably should do is, you know what I could do? I'm not going to ask, what do you folks think? Uh, just a coat of clear gesso over all of this to kind of make sure it doesn't, make sure it stays down. You think that, or just another, another coat of this, what should I do? Matte medium or clear gesso? Anybody have any thoughts? Any of you experienced crafters out there? I'm just afraid that this stuff might peel up or just leave it for now. I can just leave it for now and I can always go back and do another coat of this or add some clear gesso to it. Yes. Okay. All righty. Let's see. I'm going to punch a hole with the old handy dandy, the classic hole puncher. If I can, if I'm strong enough, probably not strong enough, but I can always get the, yeah, they pretty much are. You're right. That's a, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. They are pretty much about the same thing. I'm going to have to stand up for this. Ah. That looks about the middle. It's far enough in. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I did it. I did it. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh. I almost made, oh my God, I thought that was a little thick. Oh my God, I almost screwed that up. Oh, Lordy. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I almost punched a hole in my thing. Oh, Lord. I thought that felt a little thick. doesn't matter. Oh, okay. That would have been. Yes. And I have that. Thanks to Dee Dee. Because everything Dee Dee, I mean, I actually have some of that stuff. I don't know whether she sprays it, but I have some of that. I do have that stuff. So I could do that. That's, thank you, Barbara. That's another good suggestion. I could do that too. Good. Good suggestion. So I've got matte medium varnish or clear gesso. The possibilities are endless. Thanks, Barbara. I appreciate you guys watching me do this for the last three weeks, I think. Um, I mean, I've worked on it. I've worked on it off camera too. But when you get in there and you start decorating, you know, you're adding a little bling to the uh, 
the ornaments and such. It's fun. You add the little lights. I'm actually thinking of going back uh, and adding some uh, embossing glaze, Timmy's embossing glaze on the ornaments and maybe add some uh, embossing glaze on the snow to give it a little sparkle. I mean, those are another couple of things that I could add to jazz it up even more. But I mean, it's for the most part, it's done. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. All right. There. So, but let me show you real quick. Oh, it's seven o'clock. All right, let me just show you real quick uh, what one of the kitties. Oh man, let me show you what the kitties look like. One of the kitties. Well, I can show you a kitty outfit. How's that? So here's the here are the kitty outfits, and then the cat gets drawn in 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 the the clothing, and this was just pattern paper that I painted on. And then the kitties, the kitties will be, I think I'm going to do that with uh, draw them in pencil and color them in with colored pencils. And uh, then they're going to go, I had one done. Let me see. I can't find the one I had done. Let's see. Well, that's one that's drawn and then I'm going to color that in, but I had one that anyway, that that's what they're going to look like. All righty. Well, good night, folks, and have a good week. Oh, here's one I did. I just lost it. So there's one that's going to be done. That's kind of maybe it's going to look like. So, oh, that's okay, Ampex. That's okay. So, good night, all. Have a good week. And remember, if you can't be good, be careful. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Bye.